Hello guys, hello. <clears throat> How are we all? Let's just see if we can brighten it up so a bit better, doesn't it? Let's see if we can bring it back a bit. Mm -hmm. So you can see what I'm doing. Hi Tammy. Hi Kim. So here I am back in Yorkshire. Oh, life likes to throw curveballs at you. Um, I'm back at my parents. Hello. Hi guys. Um, so uh, my house was not ready and me living in it would have made it very difficult for them to finish it and also for it to uh, for Jasmine to be in it um, and uh, for them to finish it um, with social distancing etc etc so on Fri Friday I went I still went down um, I spent most of Friday with Molly sorting out the shop um, because we needed to get that into a better state because it had just been left and then on um, Saturday at eight o'clock, the removal men came. We couldn't cancel that because you have to book that way in advance. So they still came and we put, um, I put everything in the house. Um, and I started, Jasmine's room um, has, is actually finished. So I started to kind of get that room ready. But apart from that, there was nothing I could do. There was a toilet, but there was no shower, no bath, no sink, no kitchen sink. So no water inside the house. There's an outside tap. Um, and yeah, it's still a lot of decorating to be done. It just was not, you know, not good for me to be there. So I uh, finished um, there about half three, went and picked up Jasmine and drove all the way back to Yorkshire. So yesterday I was shattered, um, just really exhausted. And I still am a bit now, but I'm catching up. Anyway, so I'm here and I'll be here this week. Um, I'm going to move in on Thursday now and everything has arrived and everything that had been delaying them is now, you know, should be fine. So unless something else goes wrong, fingers crossed it doesn't, I will be able to move in on Thursday. But until then, I'll be continuing on my sew alongs. A couple of things about this week. Um, so, um, <laughs> the fabric didn't arrive for my Sylvia robe. Um, so, I it's arrived in London, but not in time for me to pick it up when I was there. So, I didn't have any fabric. I have, however, found some Busy Blossom navy back here. So, tomorrow, when we're doing our sew along, um, I'm going to start it in that, but I had intended to make my dressing gown version in uh, crepe. So um, I think what I might do is start it in the Busy Blossom and then I will uh, put that one to one side and catch up and then finish it in the long, in the crepe, because hopefully some will arrive in time, but we'll see. Um, so today, we are here to do our morning, Lorianne, to do our landscape. So this is the one that I have done. Um, so this was inspired by Yorkshire, where I am at the moment. Uh, lots of lovely sheep around. I couldn't do little lambs. I thought they'd be too difficult. But the idea is that you've got kind of a horizon and you've got, um, so the sheep are a bit further back and then we've got these in the front. And that's my little landscape picture. So I'm going to show you how to do that and then I'll be back at two o'clock to bake the pansy dress and I have this lovely anchor fabric um, that I'm going to be making that out of um, and then tomorrow the Sylvia robe. Um, but yeah, I also don't have a Sylvia robe to um, wear so I'm really sorry that I won't have that tomorrow um, because I can't make one today in time for tomorrow because I have no fabric. <laughs> So not as organised because everything is everywhere now. I don't know where. I've got my sewing machine, I've got my overlocker and um, I've got the bare minimum, but that's that's it. Everything else is just <laughs> in boxes all over. Right, so this, um, I think I'm going to start by talking you through how I did this and then we'll have a go at doing one together. So if I hold it up and then I just point to things, you can see. So the first thing is I've got two background layers. I've got the sky and then I've got my hills in a green. 
So I basically, I cut out the hills um, and they're the big piece of fabric really behind. And then I also um, had the blue there. Now I've cut it all off the back um, and you, I'm gonna talk about how we can make that neat if you want to but essentially they weren't even glued together. I pinned them and then when I made my sheep, I basically stitched through the layers. So you can see the stitching on the back, that's where the sheep stitching is, and that's anchored the two fabric, two felt pieces together. So the sheep I've done with um, a combination of a little bit of uh, just white felt, or I think it's actually very pale gray felt, and then I did French knots, which I'll show you how to do. Um, we did those when we were doing the flowers. <clears throat> um, I believe I haven't got that hanging up anymore, so I can't even refer to that. But so we've got French knots there and then just little, little two little straight stitches to create the legs. And then these, again, separate petals like we did when we did the flowers and then a big mess of French knots to create the bit in the middle. This is just one piece that I cut out, one flower. And then the stems of the flower, just straight bits of felt that I just did a running stitch down the middle so that they stay in um, place. And then this is just some grass that I just cut out. Um, and that's another strip that's just been laid over the green felt here. And then I just did a big running stitch at the bottom to put that in place. So let's have a go at doing one together. I should have said as well that I basically start off, well, you'll see that when I do this one, but you start off with it with big square pieces of felt. And once you've finished it and you put it into your hoop, you then cut it all off. I forgot to put that little bit there off actually. Um, and then it's all lovely and neat. So you don't need to worry about getting the perfect size. The main thing is that you've got a good bit of extra around before you start. So when I cut out the other grass, I actually ended up, I cut it sort of like into it. So I've got another piece of grass. So I thought I could do that. I am running out of felt. So um, I need to have a look at what I could do that with. I mean, it doesn't really matter. We can have pink skies. We can have whatever color sky we want. We could have gray sky, couldn't we? I've got some gray sky. I wonder if, I don't have any blue, or oh, I have that light. So I was thinking it would be nice to do some mountains um, on this one. So I've got, I'm just wondering if my little piece of felt here is wide enough for it to stay in the, the hoop. Mm, yeah, I think so. Because that can be my sky. So I just use the hoop as a kind of rough guide. And then <clears throat> I can create my mountains. Or maybe actually it'd be safer. Let's do that as my sky. So I definitely don't have, yeah, I don't have enough blue. So I'm going to do my sky as this light grey. Then, so that's the base. And then I'm going to cut out of this some, um, oops, some um, mountain shapes. So I'm just going to use a regular pencil and draw those on. I'll just cut myself a bit of a neater section. See if I can lower this down so you guys can see what I'm doing down here. So that's that there. Um, I'm just going to lay that on again. Check that I'm happy with that. Okay. So let's do some nice pointy mountains. And I was thinking we could, I could use this lighter grey to create some snowy tops on them as well. Okay. I've got a rough... It doesn't come out very, very clear, but I've got a rough amount. So then you want to cut your shapes out. And you might need help with your cutting. Um, you could draw your shapes first and then do your cutting out. Okay, there's my mountain. So let's just lay that on and have a look. So I've laid that on like that. And then I'm going to lay my, that's like, that okay so <clears throat> then i'm just going to pop some pins in just so that holds still um then i'm going to get some um, of the lighter gray and we can create some snowy mountain tops out of that so i'm just going to hold that over the top of one of my mountains there and make sure it's the same shape triangle at the top as the mountain and then wibbly wobbly Cut in some snowy peak. 
it looks a bit big for that one actually I might move it onto there so I'll just show you that what that how that looks yeah so I'm gonna do now because you wouldn't have one one with with, with um, snow and not the other so I'm just going to do some for the other ones but maybe it's a little amount on that one there we go let's put that pin back in there and then this one's a bit of a different triangle he's a bit more of an isosceles triangle he's a little bit narrower so I'm just going to cut that and then do my wibbly wobbly so this you could do, obviously this is lovely to do as little pictures as we're doing in the embroidery rings, but you could do this for cards. You could make cards and send cards to family or friends that you're not seeing at the moment. Oh, I wish you were here type card. Okay. And there's another one. So we've got our snowy peaks on our mountains. Okay. Then, because in the mountains, down at the bottom of the valley, you can have green grass. When I go to Switzerland, that's what it's like. So I'm just going to position my grass that I'd already cut. Now, literally all I was doing is just cutting grassy shapes in and out like that. But if you want an easy way of doing grasses, you could just cut in like that. So you could just do that. So I'm just gonna put that there. Oops. Threads wrapped around there, and now I'm going to put some pins in just to hold my grass in place. And I keep using my embroidery ring just to check that everything's lining up. That looks good. Now I think I should do some nice yellow flowers. So let's have a think about what flower I could do. Um, well, you can do a nice kind of what I call a cartoon flower. Or you could do like I did on this and you could do separate petals. I'm just doing, <laughs> I think I'm going to try and do one all in one at the moment, but we'll see. It's a funny shaped flower, but let's remember flowers are not always perfect and symmetrical. So don't worry too much. I've sort of done half a flower, haven't I? Maybe what I'll do, that can be the bottom of the flower. So, there. Okay, we'll put him there. One little yellow flower, and let's do another lello. Another lello, 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 lello. <laughs> another yellow flower. I forgot to do my intro, as I always do, because I was telling you all about the move, but um, thank you for being here, guys. Alex is here answering questions if you have any. If you're watching this after it's live, you'll find information in the description box below and you can also see all the comments and it might be that someone has asked the question you wanted to ask. So it's worth having a look. All of our sew alongs are free to watch. We decided we wanted to do that. But our business is, like many businesses, it has been affected by um, what's happening at the moment and it is ever morphing and changing. So we can't have our shop open, we can't run our workshop. So we're doing these because we want to, but also um, because it's another way of us trying to make up for um, not being able to have our shop open. So if you are in a position to donate, please do. We'll be very grateful. Um, and <laughs> this is enormous. And we have a Ko-fi page where you can donate um, and you can buy us a virtual coffee as a thank you. And thank you so much to all of you who've been incredibly generous throughout this. Ooh. Yeah, it's a big flower and a little flower, but I think that works. Okay, so let's have a look. As you're creating your picture, building it up, you can just keep checking and looking. Okay, I think we'll do some nice contrasting thread in the middle there. So we've got to now stitch the little bits on. That's what we do. So I'm using the pins there, but we need to stitch them in place. Now I have a massive bag, as you can see here, of lots of lovely embroidery threads that I can use. Um, but don't worry if you've only got a select few colours, it doesn't really matter. Um, I think that's not quite, I think actually, I think I saw a white. There we go. Mm, yeah, we're gonna do that. 
So I'm going to get, get some of this and I don't want to have too thick a thread because I think my thread on the last one, I didn't separate them and I think the thread's too thick. So I'm going to separate it on this. Okay, so I'm sorry you can't see my face at the moment. You can just see my chin, but I think that it's better because then you can see what I'm doing down here. Um, and so I'm going to thread my needle. Now, if you find that when you're sewing, you keep losing your thread through the needle and it keeps coming undone, then you want to tie your two ends together and then it can't get come undone. But I'm going to just do a single thread and then I get more out of my thread. So I'm going to start off and I'm going to sew my little tops of mountains on and I'm just going to do it with a running stitch. So a really nice, easy, basic stitch and I'm going to come along the top of my mountains. I think if I just do the top two uh, edges, that will be fine. So just the triangle bits. I'm not going to go around the wibbly wobbly snow bit. I hope that makes sense. Well, I'll try and turn it that way so you can see um, where I'm going. I'll take my pin out as well now because that's held. Now last week, my sister and my nephew and niece were joining in and I didn't realise that they had. Um, so Anna, Rishi and Nina, if you're watching, say hi. I think my sister said that she found it easier to do it pre-recorded, because I mean the recorded version, because then she could press pause. Plus my, my niece, Nina, apparently kept talking to me. I think she got, was getting confused that it wasn't FaceTime and I couldn't answer back. Hmm. Okay, so that's one. Let's have a look at that up close. You see. Okay, so we'll just do that now. You can keep the same thread. You don't need to change it. So these, whilst I'm doing this, I should just say we've got one more of these next week. Um, so next week at one o'clock, we're going to be doing badges and that will be our last children's sew along that we are doing. Um, things are obviously changing now here in the UK um, and people are starting to go back to kind of some form of normality. And so for us to maintain all of this, we can't do everything. So we've decided that we will stop doing these. But the good thing is that they are all there on our YouTube channel so you can watch them again you haven't had a chance to watch any of them they're there um i've so far in total done 41 sew alongs videos so there's a lot of videos up there and we're gonna do in the after after that one we'll we'll do a nice something that i've asked have been asked for a lot which is headscarves which i haven't actually made this one but i've had a lot of requests for that so we're going to do a sort of easy quick project will be headscarves afterwards um, and then that will be the last Monday session that we do. And then after that, we'll be doing Tuesdays and Wednesdays um, in the same format that we've always been doing, which is one dressmaking project that we do over the two days. And I'm going to be continuing with that indefinitely. Okay. I've also, I was doing a really nice live sew along on, in, not sew along, sorry, live chat on Instagram with Lisa Lex from By Hand London yesterday. And that went really well. So I'm planning on doing lots more things like that. Dee, 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 dee. So don't worry, you'll be seeing just as much of me. <laughs> just maybe in diff on different platforms. Okay. Oh, I like this one. I was thinking with the other one, I really wanted to hang it up in Jasmine's new room because it reminded me, um, you know, it will remind us of our time in Yorkshire. And then now I'm like, actually, I've got a bit of a mountain theme in her bedroom. I had these little mountain shelves that I made when she before she was born that I had in her first nursery. And so now I'm like, hmm, I think I could just get a um, embroidery ring, another embroidery ring and put this one up as well. Um, so. Okay. There we go. So to finish off, we're going to tie a knot like that and then we're going to put the needle into the knot and pull it down and that way the knot sits nice and close to the felt. So that's, that's that part done. Let's go on to the flowers now. Now I think it'd be really nice to have some really bright 
colours to those, or maybe blue. Let's have a look. Mm, or do I want pink? I think I want pink. I didn't put pink in the other one. I know this is terrible. I keep pulling these and getting them into tangles. If anyone's watching who's an embroiderer or cross stitch, she'll probably be shouting at the screen right now. Mm. No. Try them. Oh, come on. I didn't want to separate this one because I want to have, I'm going to do French knots. So I wanted to have some nice thick strands in there. So not in the end. And so I'm going to go into the middle of the flower. Like that. And then I'm going to wrap thread around three times and then I'm going to go back into the flower. Now this is how I got the, the sheep's head in the last landscape one that I did that I showed you and how I also did middle of flowers. So if you kind of leave it quite loose as you're pulling it tight then you get quite a kind of messy loopy thing which I quite like but if for the sheep's head I needed it to be a little bit neater so, and with this, this is quite big, so I'm gonna do a few neat French knots. So I'll show you how best to keep them a bit neater. So again, we're wrapping it round the needle three times, and then we're going back in like that. And then I just made sure that it was quite nice and tight and go a little bit slower. Okay, so let's do that again. I think we've got room for probably about three French knots here. Okay, so one, two, three, and then just pull them, just pull the needle slightly closer. So sorry, pull the thread slightly closer to the needle and tighten it a bit as you go back into the fabric and that will make yourself a much neater French knot. Okay. Um, I think actually after saying that, I think I'm going to have to do a few. So wrap round three times, back in, pull. See that one I didn't tighten and you can see it's made it a bit loopier, but it kind of works, but it's not as tidy. Okay, let's do one more. One, two, three. Okay, so let's just make sure those are nice and tight, neat around it. And that one's ended up being a bit neater. So there we are. That's the centre of my flowers. So I'm now just going to take my thread behind, do a little stitch and do a knot and then push that knot down with the needle as I tighten it. Okay, so flowers, we've done those, but we haven't done the stems. Let's do those. Let's do the stems. So how I did the stems on the other one is I just cut um, two strips of felt and just pulled them a little bit. And then you get kind of nice fine point at the top. So I'm just gonna also peel that back and tuck this one in. Cut that wispy bit off. Okay. Actually, I think he could be a bit thinner. Let's make him a bit thinner. There we go. Close that back over it. One stem done. Ooh, that's nice. That was just a bit that I cut off and I think that would work really well. Now, I'm doing a lot of sewing, but you don't have to do as much sewing as this. If you want to do less sewing, you could use some glue and you could stick things on instead. Right, let's find 
in my enormous bag here. I don't think I had a green actually that was really good. Um, I know, I know this is very messy. It's actually stressing me out. <laughs> oh, I need to find a way of organizing all my embroidery threads. I think this is the one that I used before, so I'm just going to use this, but I'm going to make sure the threads aren't as thick as before. So I'm going to separate it. So I'm going to split it three and three, and then just slowly separate it like that. Oops. <laughs> it helps if you have some tension on the bottom of it like that. I don't have anyone to hold it, so my mouth will create that tension. Right, so... Now I'm going to thread the needle, and again, you can do double thread if you want to by tying the loose ends together. But I um, want it to be quite a fine thread, so I'm not going to I need to cut that. They're all separated there. No? No joy! Why are you not threading, Mr. Needle? Looks like I'll be doing two strands, not three strands if this doesn't thread. Let's try again, cut it again. And there we go. Third time. So, I'm going to sew that button up. Yeah, that's fine. Oh no, what has happened here? We've now got into a pickle. Ah! Pickle, pickle, pickle. I think it's because there isn't actually. Hopefully that will be okay. Right, so not in the end. Oh, there we go, that's better. I don't know what was going on there. So now I'm going to do a running stitch through the funny piece of grass there. I just needs to tr be trimmed through the middle of my stem. So just like I did in around the tops of the mountains. Oh dear, what did I do? <laughs> I pulled it out. I'm not having much luck with this needle and thread today, am I? Okay, that's that one done. And now I'm going to go and do this one, which is going to be harder because it's a little wispy piece of felt, but I'm up for the challenge. <clears throat> the thinner the piece of felt, the harder it will be just to run your needle through it in the middle. But you could always do a little overstitch round the stem if it's hard, too hard to go in and out. She ended up doing a back stitch here, which is a running stitch is fine, guys. It will look the same. Okay. Let's just pull that back. Okay. In it goes. Not off in the same way. Okay. We're getting there. So now... I need to just check with my embroidery ring how much is going to be showing. About that much. So I think I'm going to take a risk and I think I'm not going to need to stitch along the bottom there. I think it should be fine. It should hold it in place. So I'm going to try now and put it in my embroidery hoop. So this bit goes on the bottom. Take those out. Oh no. Oh no. Stay still. That goes on the bottom. 
I'm going to just push that down a bit. And then this goes on top. I'm going to make sure that the top screw there is ideally at the top. And then you might need to loosen that screw so that it gets a bit bigger, this top layer. Ah! Otherwise it pops like that. Let's loosen mine a bit more. Um, we also want to just get that grass in a little bit more. Oof. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm winning. I think I've got it. I'm just going to pull that a little bit tighter there if I can. And tighten it there. What I love about this grass that it's not attached is then it sticks out and I think that's really nice. Makes it a nice texture. So that is now really firmly in. And if you want, if you can, you can tighten that top screw to make it tighter, but I don't think mine will. And then we take some good fabric scissors and we're just gonna trim off the extra. there you've got a landscape picture made of felt. Mountains, we can't go to mountains at the moment but we can make a picture of them or Yorkshire. Okay guys, oh let's push this up. So I hope you found that um, fun um, and it was a good, a good idea of something you could be doing, creating little felt pictures. Um, we'll take some photos of it and make sure we put them up on our Instagram so you can have a look at them in, um, in, in a bit of a closer photo but thank you for joining me those of you that have joined me don't forget to give us a thumbs up or subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and if you know someone that you think would enjoy this or get something out of this then please do send the link to them and share it with them i will be back at two o'clock um i'm gonna now quickly cut out my pansy dress and i will be showing you how we make that i'll see some of you then bye